Hello, a warm welcome to you from SGT University. I am Dr. Kapil Hazarika from Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. Today, we will be learning about pharmacotherapy of diarrhea. The World Health Organization defines diarrhea as passage of three or more loose or watery stools in a 24 hour period. The therapeutic measures involved in management of diarrhea may be grouped into rehydration therapy that is treatment of fluid depletion, then treatment of shock and acidosis. It is followed by maintenance of nutrition. You will be amazed to know that contrary to traditional view, patients of diarrhea should not be starved. Simple foods like breast milk or half strength buffalo milk, boiled potato, rice, chicken soup, banana, sago, etc. should be given as soon as the patient can eat. The next therapeutic measure which is very important is the pharmacotherapy or drug therapy which is administered when it is very essential. The drug therapy consists of specific antimicrobials, non-specific anti-diarrheal drugs probiotics and zinc mainly used in pediatric diarrhea let's learn about the status of antimicrobials in diarrhea one or more antimicrobial agent is almost routinely prescribed to most patients of diarrhea however such drugs have a limited role in the overall treatment of diarrheal diseases. Diarrhea patients can be broadly placed in one of the two categories. The first one is of those patients who pass abundant watery diarrhea, lacking mucus or blood, usually dehydrating with frequent vomiting, but little or no fever. They are generally caused by adhesive but non-invasive enterotoxigenic bacteria such as cholera, enterotoxigenic E. coli, salmonella or by rotavirus. ORS is the mainstay of the therapy in such patients. The next group of patients are those who pass slightly loose stool which are present with mucus and or blood they have no vomiting and are mildly dehydrated usually attended with fever and abdominal pain these symptoms are indications of mucosal invasion generally caused by enteroinvasive organisms like Shigella, Enteropathogenic E. coli, Campylobacter jejuni, Entamoeba histolytica, Clostridium difficile, etc. Antimicrobials are needed in many of these patients. Antimicrobials are of no value in diarrhea due to non infective causes such as irritable bowel syndrome, patients with celiac disease and pancreatic enzyme deficiencies, those with tropical sprue, except when there is some secondary infection associated with it, and in patients with thyrotoxicosis. Antimicrobials 
are useful only in severe diseases but not in mild cases in travelers diarrhea mostly due to enterotoxigenic e coli campylobacter in these conditions drugs such as cotrimoxazole norfloxacin and doxycycline reduce the duration of diarrhea enteropathogenic e coli is less common but causes shigella like invasive illness cotrimoxazole or a fluoroquinolone or colistin may be used in acute cases shigella enteritis only when associated with blood and mucus in stools may be treated with ciprofloxacin or norfloxacin non typhoid salmonella enteritis is often invasive severe cases may be treated with a fluoroquinolone cotrimoxazole or ampicillin antimicrobials are regularly useful in cholera where tetracyclines reduce stool volume to nearly half cotrimoxazole is an alternative especially in children in case of diarrhea with campylobacter jejuni norfloxacin and other fluoroquinolones eradicate the organism from the stools erythromycin is fairly effective and is the preferred drug in children clostridium difficile produces antibiotic associated pseudomembranous enterocolitis the drug of choice for the super infection is metronidazole while vancomycin used orally is an alternative but you have to remember that offending antibiotic must be stopped in case of amebiasis and giardiasis metronidazole and diloxonide furate are effective drugs there are many non specific antidiarrheals used in treatment of diarrhea let's now discuss about them there's a group of non specific antidiarrheal drugs it comprises of anti secretory agents such as resicadotril octreotide and other opioids anti motility agents such as loperamide and diphenoxylate there is a group of absorbents such as isopicola and methyl cellulose these are drugs which are also used in treatment of constipation so isopicola and methyl cellulose have actions both in constipation as well as in diarrhea absorbents such as kaolin pectin and atapulgite may also be used resicadotril is a pro drug which is rapidly converted to its active form thiorphen which is an enkephalinase inhibitor it prevents degradation of endogenous enkephalins which are mainly delta opioid receptor agonists by lowering mucosal cyclic amp levels in the intestine due to enhanced enkephalin action it reduces the intestinal hypersecretion enkephalinase is an enzyme which catalyzes these enkephalins now resicadotril through its active form thiorphen 
causes inhibition of this enkephalinase enzyme and the levels of enkephalin are maintained it is used in short term treatment of acute secretory diarrhea it has no effect on motility as the motility appears to be regulated through new opioid receptors octreotide is a somatostatin analog it is a potent anti secretory and anti motility drug it is given by subcutaneous injection it has been used to control diarrhea in carcinoid tumors and vasoactive intestinal peptide secreting tumors known as vipomas it may also be used for refractory diarrhea in aids patient lopinamide is an anti motility anti secretory agent is an opiate analog with major peripheral new opioid agonist activity and additional weak anticholinergic properties entry into brain is negligible and cns effects are almost not seen that is why it has no abuse liability it may cause paralytic ileus toxic megacolon with abdominal distension in young children because of which fatalities have occurred this is the reason why it is contraindicated in children less than 4 years of age however it appears to be the most effective and most suitable of the anti motility anti diarrheal drugs among the category of non specific anti diarrheal drugs absorbents are colloidal bulk forming substances like isoflula and methyl cellulose these absorb water and swell they modify the consistency and frequency of stools and give an impression of improvement but do not reduce the water and electrolyte loss they are of value in selected conditions like diarrhea phase of irritable bowel syndrome adsorbents like kaolin pectin atapulgite are believed to absorb bacterial toxins in the gut and coat or protect the mucosa they were once very popular ingredients of diarrheal remedies but are now banned in india the reason being there is no objective proof of their efficacy in diarrhea now i will touch upon the role of probiotics and zinc in treatment of diarrhea the next group of drugs are probiotics these are microbial cell preparations which are non pathogenic either live cultures or lyophilized powders that are intended to restore and maintain healthy gut flora diarrheal illnesses and antibiotic use are associated with alteration 
in the gut microflora. Recolonization of the gut by non-pathogenic, mostly lactic acid forming bacteria or yeast is believed to help restore this balance. The probiotic organisms are Lactobacillus species, Bifidobacterium, Streptococcus thermophilus, Streptococcus faecalis, Enterococcus species, Bacillus mesentericus, and the yeast Saccharomyces boulardii. Several reviews and meta-analysis of clinical trials have suggested that probiotics significantly reduce antibiotic-associated diarrhea, acute infective diarrhea, and risk of traveler's diarrhea. Studies have shown that administration of zinc along with low osmolarity ORS reduces the duration and severity of acute diarrhea episodes in children below 5 years of age. Continued zinc supplementation for 10 to 14 days following the episode also reduces the recurrences of diarrhea for the next 2 to 3 months. It is administered at a dose of 10 to 20 mg per day in children below 5 years for 10 to 14 days. It is recommended by the World Health Organization, UNICEF and Government of India. So today we learned about pharmacotherapy of diarrhea. The next time we meet, we will be exploring about antihistamics. Keep learning, keep growing, see you next time.